Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Kaba Ilko number 7165AA2-03-KA2. Uh, this is a mortise cylinder. Uh, this is a cylinder that's priced and sold per each. I happen to have two in my hand here uh, because it's germane to part of the part number, that KA2, which we're going to talk about. What it is is simply a mortise cylinder. 7165 from Kaba Ilko is a one inch mortise cylinder. Mortise cylinders are measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam, which is one inch. That's a 7165. As you change 7165, you will get a different either length of mortise cylinder or a different cylinder type uh, altogether. Uh, and we're going to talk about that when we get to the uh, manual um, in some supporting documentation. If you have a cylinder that does not have a cam, like a dummy cylinder, it's still going to be as if the cam was there. So, uh, you know, the body of this is about 7 eighths. With a cam, it's 1 inch. Very nice, very, very smooth operation because it's made of solid brass. The plug, the um, balance of the cylinder shell, uh, is all made of, of brass, very smooth operation because they can achieve very tight machining tolerances, giving you really good operation when you mass when you pin this material or do any locksmithing services to it. You know, it's just they're nice to work with. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about Kaba Ilko is they get those. Um, these might be 440 screw, 440 thread. Don't quote me. I think it's 440 or it's a 348. It's one of the two. Uh, if you need to know that, reach out to me and I'll, I, I have a box of screws over there that I use when I am doing custom work on a cylinder and I need a longer <laughs> screw. I think it's 440. Oh, speaking of thread type, this is 1 and 5 30 second of an inch uh, or 1.15 uh, inch diameter. It's 32 threads per inch. That's considered a UNS thread. If you were to look that up, you'll find uh, a, uh, a proper definition for UNS. I, I know that calling it ultra fine is not correct, but it is the finest thread in terms of packing threads per inch that you'll find on hardware that I'm aware of. And the reason they use 32 threads per inch is because you're installing this down to a very thin piece of material like the case of a lock. So you need lots of threads as much as possible making contact with the inside wall of that lock uh, plate that you're attaching it to. Um, so very typical. There are different sizes of diameters of mortise cylinders. Peanut cylinders are three quarter. Uh, this would be a standard mortise cylinder, inch, uh, inch and five thirty seconds. There are inch and a half what they call jumbo cylinders or master ring cylinders uh, that you'll find primarily from Corbin Russwin, although other people have made inch and a half diameter. That's also thirty two threads per inch. Then you'll find two inch mogul cylinders. Two inch cylinders are really massive. Uh, they're used in detention work. They have wholly larger parts. Springs, pins, everything inside of here is just simply larger. The keys are larger to go along with all of that detention work. So those four mortise cylinder types you will potentially find. Peanut cylinders, cylinders are really odd, but this is the common one and five thirty second of an inch. So it's an AA, which means it's an arrow keyway. This is a typical common classic arrow, the 1179, or I think arrow calls it a K2 uh, keyway with a original look-alike bow on the on the uh, on the key it has direct code on it 22442 that means that from bow to tip it's 22442 according to the arrow system in terms of how that's been combinated the term is combinated uh, how we've keyed that or pinned that and those are pin tumblers that work in there there are other types of tumblers disc tumblers lever tumblers this is a pin tumbler construction it originally Invented by the Egyptians 4,000 years ago, actually, uh, and refined and patented and brought into the modern era, believe it or not, in about 1850 by Linus Yale Jr. Uh, took the Egyptian idea. I, you know, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any quote where Linus Yale Jr. looked at the Egyptian invention that basically had pintle and said, "That's the answer." I'm just going to make that fit what I'm working on. I don't know that there's that ever been that statement, but there's a clear connection between the Egyptian drawings of a lock um, that had basically pin tumblers work in them. So this 170 years later is basically founded on Linus Yale's patent or 
4,000 years later based on the Egyptian work. Uh, the problem with that lock is the key was really huge. Like, really huge? As in, like, you have to carry it around? <laughs> so, not very practical. Um, but I guess there was less theft then. So, you know, people just left their doors unlocked. Well, actually, probably because they didn't have valuables to keep locked up. So, there you go. The AA, so it's a typical arrow, five pin. Now, this is a one inch cylinder. It's only drilled five, it's not drilled six because the cylinder's too short. We'll talk about that more in a moment. It's a two in the back, which means it has an 863A cam or an Adams Wright cam. Adams Wright has a couple of different cams for sure, perhaps three, I always forget, but there are definitely two. This is the cam that you'll use for typical uh, aluminum storefront work. You know, they're you know, 4900 series lock body, the 4510, almost everything that you're working on Adams Wright will take this Adams Wright cam. They have many others, which we'll go uh, over in a moment. The 03, that means polished brass. It actually means three things. That scalp plate, and they call it a scalp plate, it's a thin piece of brass. It's made of brass. It's polished brass, and it has a lacquer applied. And that scratched surface you see there is just the peel-away protective covering over that. Now it's KA2. That means for every two cylinders that you order, when you order them in sets of two and specify KA2, these two are going to be key to like. There are two cylinders inside of here and there are two sets of two keys each that have the same code. So if you needed two cylinders key to like, order at KA2. You'll get them. It's no added cost uh, like in another line item to master or to uh, do any sort of locksmithing working work to it. Um, now, if you needed three cylinders and you ordered them all KA2, well, that third cylinder is not going to be keyed to anything, and it won't be keyed to that group. They're just literally sets of two, and those sets of two are all different. So if you need locksmithing work, um, think about how you'll order that, and we can help you with that locksmithing work. Uh, and as we get to the uh, cylinder manual, we'll go over that. Let's switch now to the um, screen view where we can take a look at the supporting documentation. Okay, so this is the item that we are looking at here. Gives us our generic factory image. By the time you're seeing this video, that will probably have, uh, have evolved. One inch, five pin, arrow with an 863A cam, key like in pairs. And we've discussed the rest of all these details that are here. That shows a image of the broaching in the cylinder plug. That's what the typical arrow keyway looks like. That is called paracentric. Meaning, if you drew an if you drew a vertical line down through the center of the broaching, there are wards that project across that center line, making it paracentric. That's the um, that's the term used uh, in the locksmithing industry to tell us that the keyway has wards that cross the vertical center line. Why is that important? Well, it makes the generation of a non-original key like a flat piece of metal or a paper clip from working the cylinder as easily. Imagine if this broaching was just rectangular. You could stick any instrument in there and manipulate those pins. It's a bit more of a challenge when you have a paracentric keyway and you will most definitely see countless hundreds, thousands and thousands of examples of paracentric keyways as you study all of the different lock manufacturers. There are some lock manufacturers that are exceptionally paracentric and they do that because it's literally to help thwart picking techniques um, of getting a tool in there. If you can't get the tool in there it's it's you know you'll have to consider another way to manipulate the pin the pin tumblers. This is a little bit uh, more open but you know I don't believe Arrow when this keyway was established in who knows when, mid-century, I, I could only guess when this Arrow Keyway was established. It could be a hundred years old. I don't know the how long Arrow's been in business, but um, this Keyway is, is, is several, several decades old, and that's just a guess. That's what the cam looks like, the 863A. So let's deep dive into all of these aspects. The link to the manufacturer's page here that's a handy one that will allow you to open up the brass cylinder manual and that's handy because it's going to allow us to really take a look better at how those part numbers are established uh, and put together so here we are one two three four five 
and we're going to look at them that way. 7165 is literally from the table below. It's a one inch cylinder, five pin. It's not drilled six. You have to be at least an inch and an eighth to get a six pin in the chamber, in the chambers itself. So if you're running a six pin system, in arrow and you have six pin keys don't buy a 7165 because your key blank uh, while, well actually your key blank will enter uh, and go through the plug because it's broached all the way through um, but you won't be able to take advantage of pinning it properly you'll lose that sixth chamber uh, so this chart is handy because you can go through all of the other part numbers different lengths primarily and then how the cylinders change as the cylinder itself changes Thumb turns, ADA thumb turns, captive thumb turns. Captive thumb turns are neat because it allows you to temporarily remove the turn on the inside. So if you had a lock, that you wanted a thumb turn on the inside, but there were times when you wanted to remove that thumb turn uh, to prevent exit, you could. And that, what I just said, is a highly code deficient sort of condition, although it is permissible, I believe, in residential applications that have three or less. But if you are, you know, just a real world example of a captive thumb turn would be your, your new parents and you have a toddler at home who's now walking and is actually tall enough to reach up and grab the lever uh, of, of the door, of the front door of the house. You, you know, you might want to consider a captive thumb turn in that application so that you can know that when you throw that uh, deadbolt and you remove the thumb turn you won't just pull the door open by doing that so you know is that an actual circumstance that could happen absolutely it is so you'll use that captive thumb turn um, appropriately now the keyway there's a chart here on different keyways so talk about the paracentric nature of it if we just looked at the AA versus this composite keyway that they've done for sergeant that three different keyways will pass through you can see how wide open that is that would not give you as much uh, restriction in terms of inserting a tool that it would here but these are these are those are compo those are s broachings done that are meant to remove the wards so that multiple keys can pass okay if you want to de dig deep around that you know you can start to look at this you know, these two Corbins, these three Corbins where it's more highly paracentric. Uh, well, maybe not more highly paracentric, but you get the concept. So the different keyways are here, and they have a couple of dozen, to be sure. And I will always try to use Kaba Ilko when I have available to me the, the keyway that's um, specified for whatever it is that I'm doing. They do have a Schleg Everest, a C-123, although it doesn't take advantage of the check pin. Um, there is, uh, no, it does. Um, I think what it is is they're making the, bro the they're making the cylinder with the broaching, but they're not making the key blanks, I think is what it is. They're not producing Everest blanks, but you can get Everest, C-123 Everest, uh, which is one of the keyways in Everest, as is C-145. Okay, lots of keyways. The Yale, the 999, the GA, I mean, these are all keyways that have been around for years and years and years. We can talk more about that if you like. Uh, reach out to us. The cam or tailpiece, there's a two here. That's going to be on the next page, and here they are. There's a two in our example as well. That's Adam's right. Uh, and as you go through here, you'll see all the different cams. So whether you're doing a trim on an exit device where you'd probably use an 863G or the standard cam, or you're getting into the Kaba Ilko 45 series deadbolts. You'd use a, this what they call a fantail cam. Very original, I know. Uh, if you are getting into, uh, this might be Marks. The 12 may be a Marks. Uh, don't quote me on that. I, don't, I just don't recall. Uh, uh, Falcon, obviously. This is what's called a cloverleaf cam. Okay. Obviously, the Schleg cam is here. Different applications. Uh, this is one of the other odd Adams Wright. This is uh, the uh, one of the other two uh, Adams Wright cams, the 4070, and maybe they only have two. I would have to check the Adams Wright catalog. Uh, you know, so there's the common 
Adam's right cam. And then there's the one that runs that 4070 lock, which may be a sliding door lock. I'd have to look that up. Okay, so next up is the finish and then the keying, and that's all on this page as well. The finish codes are here, and we're obviously doing an 03 or polished brass, bright brass. That's 605 because it means it's made of brass and that it has a polished brass finish with lacquer applied. That's what 605 means. All the other finishes are here. Obviously, satin chrome, very common. Aluminum, very common. Um, 46, a Dura color brown. If you have a dark bronze aluminum storefront, that might work. Of course, black is um, very popular these days, etc. Uh, it, you know, very, very common, most of these finishes. You don't see a polished stainless often. That's going to be a factory order. Satin bronze sometimes is factory order. Now, the keying codes over here. We're doing KA2, keto like in pairs. If you were to order seven of these cylinders, KA2, that's a problem because you'll have six sets of two, but then you're going to have one stray because uh, you're ordering an odd number. And none of those three sets of two will be keto alike. So if you, you, you need, needed them all keto alike, you'd have to specify KA. The problem with ordering it with locksmithing services, they generally don't stock them that way, so the lead time is going to be... Uh, noticeable when we order it from the factory. So to get around the lead time from the factory, we can do the locksmithing work here and we can uh, quote that sort of project to you and we can do any of the key work necessary. I don't know that these plugs and cylinders come from the factory ready to receive construction master keying. Um, if it's a lost ball system, uh, you could certainly do a, uh, a captive key um, or a lost key sort of scenario on these um, if you had the right system uh, from whatever manufacturer you're using. I don't know, I don't know how they're doing construction keying on Kaba Ilko. So it looks to me, based on what I just flipped through, is that there is a preparation for that. They'll do a construction prep preparation. I don't know the method. It's probably lost ball. If you were to search lost ball construction keying, you'll see it. It's a very simple concept to understand. Um, so they probably have to prep the cylinders additionally. So a very handy uh, cylinder manual here because it goes over uh, all this, uh, all the concepts of the cylinders that we're discussing right here on these two pages. Now, one other thing before we leave this catalog I'd like to bring your attention to is their 45 series deadbolts. The 45 series deadbolts are... I have to pull up an older catalog to show you a picture of it. The 45 series catalogs are, uh, pardon me, the 45 series deadbolts are a favorite of mine. Here's that captive thumb turn, by the way. There's a special tool that goes in here to remove that thumb turn. Um, so the 45 series, I like that series because it's modular, meaning it is in parts, and you can, you will need mortise cylinders to operate the cylinder. You can have a mortise cylinder on both sides, and if it's a double cylinder, you will. If it's a single cylinder, you can use the standard thumb turn, or you can insert a mortise cylinder uh, into the system as well and use it as a mortise cylinder for a thumb turn in case you wanted an ADA thumb turn. But what's cool about it is if you wanted any of those two dozen or so keyways from Kaba Ilko, great. Let's say you're running Schlage Primus, great. Let's say you're running something very, very odd that anyone watching this video has likely never seen, a Brahma radial cylinder or a Scorpion cylinder, uh, which is from Korea for high security, or a Canadian high security cylinder, or if you're running, you know, m -Hart, uh Corbin Russwin m -Hart high security, or anything odd, this deadbolt, this grade one deadbolt, allows you to insert these cylinders into it. Now what's, other than that, what's cool about it is it's very low profile from the face of the door and there are three back sets available. There are the two standards that you're going to know, two and three eighths and two and three quarter, but it's not three and three quarter or five inch. It's two inch. If you need a deadbolt with a two inch back set, you just found it. Here it is. Okay. Now back to the manufacturer's page. The link here to the key blank catalog is the next stop that we'll take a look at. And we'll do a search for AR1 and see what comes up. Oh, actually, back to the catalog, AA. So 
that's using an 1179 key blank. Okay, that is the part number for the key blank. If you need to order more of those key blanks, the Kaba Ilko key blank is 1179. Okay, very easy. Uh, now, back in the key blank catalog, if we were to search for 1179, we're certainly going to find it. And that easy number is AR1. You'll see that stamped on the head of the key. Okay, it comes under the name Allmet. Allmet was certainly in the late 90s, and I don't know the company history, they might still be alive and well. They were a Canadian manufacturer of locks and had a pretty strong penetration into the Chicago market for a while um, where we encountered jobs where we were needing to supply lots of all met locks. Uh, I don't know if they were Canadian manufacturer or if they were from over if they were from Asia, but that's you know obviously all met used an AR1. And as we scroll through here, you'll find just mo loads of, it, uh, of, of additional instances of it. The AR4 is that six pin, and, six pin, and it has that larger bow. And as you continue to scroll through, you're going to find in the arrow section, well, there's our typical AR1, 1179. Other arrow keyways that are here, and looking at these different broachings, um, you know, the... As I said earlier, the history of these broachings are nothing I'm able to do research on, but they do exist. They remind me of uh, Yale um, multiplex system broachings because they have this squared off feature at the bottom and they're highly paracentric, uh, etc. Okay. So this catalog is very handy because if you're looking for more information on the 1179, you can just control F or find function and keep scrolling through it and you'll find lots of instances of it but what's nice is in the back of the book there's cross references so you know the arrow k2 well that's the ilco 1179 so if you have an arrow number like a 91 g whatever that is that's an a 1179 g by kaba ilco and as i do a search for that there it is so what I just demonstrated was if you have the arrow part number 91G, you can type 91G in here and just do a find function, control F, keep hitting enter until you find all the instances of 91G. Sooner or later, you're going to come up against, you know, the arrow column in the back of the book. There it is. Okay. 91G. That's, a, that's an Ilco A1179G. Put that in your search field. And then just start letting it let it index and then start hitting enter. Okay, that's the blank you need to order. If you've got a 91G, that's your blank. Now, when you're looking at the broachings here, be mindful that that is the broaching in the cylinder plug. It's not the, it's not looking at the key. And this is the root of the broaching here on this side. If I were to take this document and rotate it, um, this is the view of what the keyway looks like when you look down into the cylinder. So if you're looking at the tip of the key, you have to, in your mind's eye, f reverse that because this is the view from the cylinder face. Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, in conclusion, really high quality cylinder. As I mentioned earlier, made of solid brass, works really smoothly. I would not, I do not hesitate to use Kava Ilko cylinders in all instances when I can. It's because you simply can't beat the value uh, of their material. The product is manufactured very well. In 30 years of working with Kava Ilko products, tens of thousands of keys, who knows how many, thousands of cylinders. I can recall actually just about a year ago one key blank that was clearly defective. It had a blade height that was maybe four thousandths off. And if it was two thousandths off, the key would still work. And I cut, you know, cutting the key, it was a small format. Uh, I believe it was a best A keyway, just a Kaba Ilko blank. And boy, that key doesn't work right. That's weird. The pins are all good. I measured the pins because you check that first. I'm like, well, what's left to cut? I checked the root cut, the root depth of the key blank. Um, and that was good. It was, it was cut to the right root depth um, but when I measured the overall height of the blank that's where the trouble came in it was clearly yeah it was clearly uh, the overall blade height was was no good because when the key blank I cut it the root was registering to the bottom of the tool 
Um, but I think when it was entering the cylinder, it was, of course, governed by the wards that were inside of there, so my cut was, was shy. And four thousandths off on a small format is going to be a problem. Four thousandths off on anything is going to be a problem for the most part. Um, so it's just amazing at the tons and tons of Kaba Ilko products I've used over the years and to have such a near zero uh, rate of defect um, is, is astonishing. I, no other manufacturer, in my opinion, that I've ever worked with uh, in that sort of volume uh, have I had that sort of success. If only door closer manufacturers had that sort of batting average. Although, you know, who knows? Door closers are more, far more complicated. I'm partial to them because of that quality, the value. I'm partial to Kaba Ilko because they uh, are participatory to the community. Um, we make a living here as a distributor. I'm a certified registered locksmith currently studying for the CPL designation. And I have questions on material that I don't know. And that's a lifelong process, right? And there was a gentleman there who was in charge of cylinders uh, at the plant. And he is, a, he is a irreplaceable resource. And he tolerates the questions. He answers them, and he answers them thoroughly. He answers the next question I'm going to ask, uh, is, how, uh, is how patient he is. So to that gentleman, I say thank you very much. If you have any questions on the Kaba Ilko 7165 AA2 in an 03 finish uh, or any other Kaba Ilko product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.